To solve a system of linear equations with two unknowns and two equations is quite straightforward. You can use your manual calculation to easily solve it. However, if you have been given a linear system, a system of linear equations with three or more than three equations and unknowns, then there will be a, a bit more tedious to solve it using the manual calculation. And hence, we need a more efficient way to find the solutions for the unknowns. And this method, we call it the Gaussian eliminations. So we are going to use the Gaussian eliminations, which involve the row operations to solve the system of linear equations to find out what are the values for the unknowns x, y, and z. Let's look at this example. So you have been given three equations, which is a system of linear equations. And first, we write it in the form of matrix form. So you can extract all the informations or the coefficients in front of the corresponding unknowns. So the first column corresponding to the first unknown x, the second column is the y, and the third column corresponding to z. So you take out all the coefficients in front of the coefficients in front of the unknowns and put it in the matrix. Normally, we elaborate as matrix A. And the unknowns will be put into another vector or the column matrix here, x, y, z, such that when you multiply this matrix A and the vector or matrix x, you'll end up getting back the original e linear equations. And of course, on the right hand side will be the constant where the column vector will be the constant for 9, 1, and 0. So we normally name it as AX equals to B. So this is the typical labeling or the term used to call the matrix form for the system of linear equations. Then to solve it, we have to put it into the augmented matrix form. So we ignore the x, y, z unknowns here. We combine, we put the matrix A and B side by side, separated by the dotted line here. So the next step is you have to reduce the row such that if possible, the first non, the first non-zero entry is one here. So with the rest of the entry below 1 are 0. And this one is known as a leading 1. So for this case, we already have the leading 1 in the first column and first row. So what are we going to do is to get rid of the 2 and 3 so that we have the leading 1 for this column and the first row as well. So to get rid of the 2 and the 3 here, you can use the first row. So in this case, I'm going to use negative 2 multiplied with the first row, and then we add it to the second row to get the new second row here. So negative 2 multiplied with 1, and you add to 2 will be 0. Negative 2 multiplied with 1, you add to 4, you will get 2. And you continue with the rest, the whole row. And to get rid of 3 equivalently, similarly, I'm going to use the first row. So I'm going to multiply negative 3 with 1 and add it to the third row so that I get a new third row with the tree is being eliminated and I continue with the rest. Now I have 1 and 0, 0 here. The next thing that we are going to do is to make, make the second row with a leading 1. So we have a 2 here as the entry, the, the first non zero entry in the second row. So I'm going to make this into 1 and I'm going to divide the second row with 2 such that I get 1 here. So this one will be the leading one for second row. And the next step is to get rid of the 3 here because we want the entry below the leading one to be 0. So we have to get rid of the 3 here and we can use the second row. Reason being we do not use the first row is because we have the one here. If we use the first row to get rid of three, we are actually introducing another constant here. So we have to use the second row here because the in front here is zero. So we wouldn't affect anything here. So to get rid of the three, we multiply the second row with negative three and you add it to the original third row. So we have the zero here. And of course, we have the one here, leading one. We have leading one here. And for the third row, we need to have a leading one. So I'm going to multiply it with negative two, such that I get one here. Now, actually you can stop here and write the linear equations and solve it. 
so this is this is the form of row excellent form we call it row excellent form when you have the leading one is being arranged in descending form and the entry below the leading one they are all zeros so I'm going to multiply this 1 1 2 with the x y z vector remember so x plus y plus 2 z equals to the constant on the right hand side so it goes to 9 and this corresponding to y and this is the z and that's why we have these equations here and the last one is z equals to 3 now can you guess why we converted the leading entry here to 1 and we have to make sure that the entries below the leading one zeros so try to ponder about it why and the leading one entry in each row and column is actually the xyz is being arranged in the descending form now we are going to substitute the z into the second equation here so we get the value of y and once we got the value of y and z we are going to substitute it back to the first equations to get the value of x so let's say the final solution should be 1, 2, 3 for the x, y, z. Well, actually, you can stop in this row excellent, this row excellent form. Or you may continue to reduce it into the reduced row excellent form. So for reduced row excellent form is to ensure that the entry below and above the leading one are zero. So in this case, we are going to get rid of the negative 7 or negative 7 over 2 in the second row 2 in the first row and 1 in the first row so we are going to use the third row because we only have one constant in the third column here so it can be used to eliminate all the constant along this column without affecting the other entries because the front two entries there are zeros the, fr the, 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 the front two entries, they are zero. So to get rid of the neg negative 7 over 2, so we multiply the third row with 7 over 2 and we add it to the second row. And we do the same for the first row to get rid of the 1 and 2 using the corresponding second and the third row. Well, eventually, if you reduce it to the reduced row actually form, the benefit is you can directly get the value of x, y, z correspondingly. So a remark for this Gaussian elimination or row operations, the column with leading one is known as the pivot column for both excellent form, either for the reduced row excellent or the row excellent form. So we call it the pivot column. So why do we call it the pivot column? Well, we will learn about this in the following lessons. So for the current moment, you just need to know that the column with the leading one is the pivot column. Second remarks is the operations involved in Gaussian eliminations. We actually have three operations here. So the first one is you can divide the whole row by a constant, just like what you have done here. So we want to get, we want to convert the two to one, right? So we divide the whole row with two. And the second operation is you can add to any row the multiplications of another row with constant. So for example, I'm going to get rid of the 3 in the second equation. So I'm going to get the new R2 equals to negative 3 using the first row and we add it to the original second row. And then the third operation is you can interchange the sequence of any row without having impact on the final solutions. So for example, you have the 0, 0, 1 here and 0, 1, 0 here. And since that we want to ensure that and since that we want to ensure that the leading one is being arranged in a descending form so we can swap their position and it won't affect anything on the final solutions here.